So let's take a look now at the scalar functions. Let's just deal with syntax. We won't really do uh, parameters. Let's do that in the next video. We'll deal with just the basic syntax of creating scalar functions without parameters. Okay, so let's kind of like talk about the, the syntax part here. Um, what I want to do is we have a business rule that says all outgoing dates that do not have time with them should spell out the name of the month in a three digit abbreviation. I'm sure there was a, a better way I could have uh, said that. All right. Okay. In other words, like if we're, if we had a date in the database and I'm just going to use uh, sysdate time for, for the time being here. Um, what we don't want it to say this, we want it to say NOV. So we want original business rule says we want November 22nd, 2010. Okay, so four digit year, uh, three digit month abbreviation, first three letters of the month, capitalize the first letter. Okay, fair enough. How can we do that? We can start by experimenting with the convert function. Do you remember that convert? Let's start playing around here. That we had convert. We want to convert, let's say, to a date. Uh, we'll grab the sys date time. Okay. Getting closer, but convert has that optional style parameter. You remember the style, how we can start. Uh, formatting the style here. Oh, and I'm converting to date, and I need to be converting to some type of a character here. Sorry. Close that. So you could see that we're able to start playing with the styles. We can make it style 12. We get a different feel. Well, maybe there's a style that implements this business rule. That would save us some time. So let's look it up. Double click on convert. Hit the F1, function 1 key on the keyboard and it says here look up class cast and convert and I do and it takes a year to load up a link in the documentation oh, it's just embarrassing I'm on a fast computer there's nothing it's just pathetic uh, and scroll down and you can see the styles hey look at there there we go style 107 Okay, do you see how it capitalizes it? So let's try that. Let's try style 107. Remember the difference in convert. If we said style 7, then that's a two-digit year. If we say 107, then it becomes a four-digit year. Well, we've satisfied the rule. We now know any time we have an outgoing date that should um, send back the data, we need to send it back in the in this format in 107. So the solution always use style 107 with convert. Okay so one of the things that we want we want to make a function create function get current server date create function that's the start Go ahead and start with go. Create function has to be the first statement in the batch. Parentheses are required. This is a function. When you define a scalar function, you must define the contract. You are defining what you will return. So you have to say returns what data type. What data type? How many characters? One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a character. Seven, eight. 12 returns var car 12. If you need to make it Unicode, you can. This is the contract. We are telling SQL Server anytime the user calls this function, I guarantee you we will return a var car 12 every time. We'll never return int, we'll never return date time. Scalar function returns a single type. As required syntax. Begin and end and go and you put your logic right here you say return 
and now we come down and type in our code convert I want to make it var card 12 sys date time 107 this is your syntax okay. here is the basic syntax okay, as is required okay. begin and end return all of these are required you're defining the contract you're defining what you will return and now you're returning it this the data type that return uses must match this I will get a failure if I did something like this if I say return um, you know uh, var binary or something like that okay because var binary is not var car 12 oops it will perform implicit conversion however because it will return a var car 12 so if I return something like um, a car 8 it's going to up size it to v var car 12 it will perform that implicit conversion for us if necessary okay execute this get current server date now when I use this get current server date what's my rule about using this you got two things you have to do it's a function right so we have to use the parentheses we will get an error message if we do not what's the second rule we have to use a two-part name you see the little icon that shows that this is a scalar function you see it tells us it's a scalar valued function and when we run this now we get it brought back right? every single time we don't have to remember that it's style 107 we don't have to know that we've abstracted away the complexities of it in our documentation that we send out to the application developers and report writers we don't have to tell them anytime you're going to do this convert it to style 107 we have a thing that says anytime you need the current server date just call that function they don't need to know anything about the convert function in SQL anything about the logic internal to the scalar function they simply know you have to call it with a two-part name and the parentheses are required we have abstracted away the complexities we've made it easy to reuse in this database uh, let's do another one just again I'm, I'm kind of making some some very simple ones most of the ones I develop will have parameters and we do that in the next video here um, but just to show you what all you can do we can have some fairly complex logic here so schema dot my function parentheses are required uh, define what I return I return a date uh, as begin and end are required so begin end and go I always just kind of put those in sometimes I will do them like that and why is it giving me the red right here it's giving me the red because I've defined that I'm returning something but I haven't returned anything now I can return something like sys date time and now this doesn't make a whole lot of sense right there so let's do something um, else here um, let's do this default date for password hints oh, all right, well hold on, hold on. Uh, placeholder date let's just do that and I'll show you what I mean okay I'm putting comments inside the function body now this is called the body of the function and so now I would add something like author Scott Wiggum uh, creation date uh, and I might make it a little prettier uh, November 22 2010 description okay. um, use this as a default for any date columns that are not null right. so I'll, I'll show you give me just a second we're going to return uh, cast sorry January I, I would really do it like this 
I didn't mean to write 2001, right? Um, which really wouldn't need to be cast uh, because it's in that format right there, the ISO format. Um, but with this, let's say that we have a column uh, in a table such that we don't want to allow nulls. We have an order date column in an orders table. That column does not allow nulls, but what if the user doesn't actually provide a value? What date would you put in there? Let's say that you've gotten some legacy data that you've imported from an older system and you have a batch of orders that do not have an actual order date. What are you going to put for the order date? Today's date? You know that these were legacy. They were sometime 10 years ago or 5 years ago, but they're certainly not today. Your table does not allow nulls. So what do you put in? We put sort of like a placeholder date in there. Like this is a very common date value for this type of application. Uh, we would then be able to query in the table to say, show me all of the orders that have the placeholder date. So we could then say, update dbo.orders, uh, set um, order date equal dbo.placeholder date, where order date is null. And then we could later on say, show me all of the orders where the order date equals the placeholder date. I'm not actually going to create placeholder date or we don't have an orders table, so therefore all this stuff is, is red here. But this is actually a fairly common design. You will then bind to the orders table placeholder date as a default value for the order date. So very, very common. Again, I'm kind of I'm kind of stretching just a little bit to show you some examples of functions that we don't use parameters for. So why don't we stop here? Let's come back in the next video and let me show you some that use parameters because I think that's where the bulk of your time will be.